Greetings everyone, David the Real Metmal here. So I'm sure us Orthodox are very familiar with this age-old Roman Catholic argument. And a Roman Catholic will ask, why are you Eastern Orthodox? And we will say, well, we're Eastern Orthodox because of this, this, and that. And a Roman Catholic will say, well, that sounds really beautiful, but uh, why are you not Eastern Catholic? And they think that's a gotcha moment. They think that's a argument that disproves our position. But actually, it disproves the Roman position. So the Eastern Catholics refute Rome. And this is the video where I will illustrate that. So before we even go ahead, I will talk to you about, uh, well, what we're going to be talking about in this video. We're going to be covering the meaning of Eucharist. This is very important, actually. Uh, then we're going to look at Eastern Rite Theology as opposed to Latin Rite Theology. And then we're going to look at Eastern Rite Saints then and now. So the past and the present of Eastern Rite Saints. So what does it even mean to commune? It means that you believe the body and blood of Christ is present in that church. You also believe that that church really does have the sacraments. Most importantly, Communing in a church is an implicit affirmation that that church preaches true doctrine. So as an example, you as a Roman Catholic will not commune in a Protestant church. Why? Well, because Protestantism is just wrong. It preaches false doctrines. Right? So when you partake in the Eucharist of a church, you're basically saying this church has a correct doctrine. This church preaches truth. Keeping that in mind, as we all know that the Eastern Catholics and, the, and Rome are in communion with one another, so this should mean that they have a unified theology, right? That is not the case. Actually, there are many theological contradictions between the East and West. Many Eastern Catholics, particularly today, still hold to Orthodox theology. It will not be wrong to say that the theology is very much the same as Eastern Orthodox theology which explicitly shows the irony in modern tradcaps attempting to refute so-called polemism. If this so-called polemism uh, in, this, in the Roman Catholic Church today is considered just as valid, just as Scotism is or, or Thomism is, why even argue against it? When Roman Catholics try to argue against orthodoxy, they're actually arguing against their own theology. And this is ultimately ironic. Uh, I have a screenshot here, uh, two screenshots actually, the screenshot below, which is from Light of Life Catechism, which is an Eastern Catholic Catechism. Um, it says that the Eastern Catholics believe that there are only seven ecumenical councils, and they reject, reject Vatican II as an ecumenical council. And then you look at Rome, and they will say, well, there's, naturally, there's 21 ecumenical councils. If you're SSPX, it will say, well, there's 20 ecumenical councils, right? So you have two conflicting views. You have conflicting views regarding the essence energies distinction and ADS. There's a screenshot above, which is from the Melkite website, which talks about how the light of Mount Tabor was a manifestation of God's uncreated divine energy comprehensible by the apostles so you can see that they're preaching actually polemism so in the east you have essence energies distinction but in the west ads is dogmatized this is why you have uncreated grace in the eastern right theology and then you have created grace in the roman catholic theology and so the east teaches doctrines that are contrary to western dogma this is very much similar to purgatory. The, uh, you will see Eastern Rite uh, Catholic Church is rejecting the purgatory teaching. And also regarding the filioque, Eastern Catholics reject the filioque. This rejection might not be on a full-on dogmatic level as you will expect, but it's evident in the creed. Eastern Catholic parishes, several of them, refuse to recite the filioque in the creed. Now what is the creed? The creed is an is a confession of faith. While you can indeed have confessions of faith that emphasize different parts of the faith, you cannot have a contradictory confession. So Rome confesses that the Holy Spirit is hypostatically processed from the Father and the Son as a single principle. Whereas in the East, they completely remove the Son. So they say that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father as a sole principle. So by not reciting the filioque, 
Eastern Catholics are pretty much rejecting the doctrine of filioque. Rome dogmatized clergy to be celibate. This is evident in Denzinger uh, 119. However, now that dogma seems to be ignored if you're Eastern Catholic. Now you might say, well, the Eastern Catholic is autocephalous. And you might have a point there, but it still shows that there's some sort of discrepancy between the East and the West. Finally, and this will be a huge claim, this might surprise a lot of you, you could have Nestorian Christology and be Roman Catholic. So let's look at the example of the Syro Malabar and the Chaldean Catholic Church. They have the anaphoras of Mar Adai and Mar Mari. They have the anaphora of Theodoret of Mopsuestia, who, by the way, is the father of Nestorianism. And last but not least, they have the anaphora of Nestorius. Now, they don't name these, uh, these Nestorian fathers, uh, and these Nestorian fathers, fathers will include uh, Theodoret, Nestorius, Diodor of Tarsus. But that is actually arguably worse, because instead of naming them, they're referring to them as Greek doctors of the church. Not only fathers, but Greek doctors. So you don't use the anaphora of a heretic. You use the anaphora of a saint. And this shows that in the Syro Malabar church and in the Chaldean Catholic church, Nestorius is a saint. So if you look at the status of saints, it is just as confusing as the theology. Again, with Nestorius, now think of it this way. So, you, so Nestorius is now a saint, but for all this time, for more than a millennium, he was a heretic. And the Council of Ephesus, which is an ecumenical council that both Rome and East affirms, uh, now suddenly Council of Ephesus was wrong in condemning him. He was a saint all along. So Nestorius was a great pious saint all along, and Ephesus was wrong in condemning him. This is, this is just stupid. Let's look at the Roman destroyers, and what I mean by Roman destroyers, I'll be referring as St. Palamas, St. Mark of Ephesus, Ephesus, and St. Photius. And we know that they are saints in the Roman Catholic Church now because the Byzantine Catholics use the Menion V years. We have the same Menion, so we have the same saints as they have. And so we know that the saints uh, Palamas, Mark, Photius are all saints in the Roman Catholic Church. Let's look at St. Palamas. His doctrines are considered, uh, were considered heretical, and by a lot of Roman Catholics today, they're still considered heretical. But can these anti palamites please explain to me how is how Saint Gregory of Palamas is a saint now? So for centuries, Rome rejected palamite theology. Rome rejected Saint Gregory of Palamas, called him a heretic, and now he's suddenly a great pious saint. This does not make any sense. What about St. Photius? According to the Robber Council of Constantinople IV, which is the council that is affirmed as an ecumenical council by the Roman Catholics, the council at 869 uh, between 870, St. Photius was deposed. St. Photius was condemned. That council, that council, I would like to remind you, is considered as an ecumenical council by Rome. And Rome rejects the Orthodox Council of Constantinople for that commenced 10 years later. But somehow, St. Photius is now a saint? And let's look at Manuel Evgenigos, which we will also call St. Mark of Ephesus. I'm sure everyone knows of his antics in the Council of Florence. He basically called the Roman Catholic Church a heretical church because of the filioque. So the guy that called your church a heretical church that rejected the union is now a saint in your in your church? Again, none of this make any sense. These people should not be saints in the Roman Catholic Church, yet they are. So as a so really you have three different options here. Alright. So let's play a game called who is right and who is wrong. Look at let's look at the three different options. The first option will be that the Eastern Catholics and the Latin Catholics are both correct. However, as you can see in this video, that is impossible because Rome and the Eastern Catholics hold contradictory doctrines. So either one of them is right and the other is wrong, or neither are just wrong. Both cannot be correct. Secondly, 
Rome is correct and the Eastern Catholics have false doctrines. If that is the case, then why are you in communion with those that hold false doctrines? That still disproves your position. Third, Rome is actually wrong and that the Eastern Catholics are right. And we will say, yes, that is actually kind of correct. But then what is the point of being in communion with Rome? Why are you, again, why are you in communion with those that hold false doctrines? And now you might say, well, because of papacy. We believe in papal supremacy. We believe that the Pope is infallible. If the Pope is truly infallible, then you won't be saying that the doctrines are wrong because the Pope will never hold a wrong doctrine under papal supremacy. Yet you are here telling me that Rome is wrong. So what's the option? Well, you can just be orthodox instead, right? You can just be orthodox instead. And this goes to Roman Catholics themselves too. You can also just be a, you can just be a orthodox instead because it shows evidently that your church holds contradictory doctrines and accepts those that hold heretical views. Numerous church fathers in scripture tells us to stay away from heretics and their doctrines. We see in scripture 2 John 11, uh, anyone who welcomes a heretic, anyone who welcomes him, shares his work. We see <clears throat> in Rome that they welcome heretical doctrines, in their view, of course. St. Paul in his epistle to Romans in 1617 tells us to separate ourselves from those who hold heretical doctrines. St. Polycarp recites a story of St. John where he flees from a bathhouse because a heretic was in that bathhouse. So not only does St. John think that being in communion with a heretic is scandalous, being in the same location with a heretic to him was scandalous. So we can see in the Roman Catholic Church, they hold the opposite approach. What they're really doing is akin to telling Arius that he can still have his own Arian right church and be in communion with Rome. Imagine telling Nestorius after condemning him in Ephesus that he can just reject Ephesus, go form his own Nestorian right church, and then be in communion with Ro Rome. This is utterly absurd. It does not make any sense. And this illustrates that the Roman Catholic Church is absurd. And so to recap, Eastern Catholics prove Rome wrong. And by extension, they prove us right. Because both churches hold contradictory doctrine, Rome is also in communion with Nestorian churches. People that both the Orthodox and the Catholic will agree are heretical. Eastern Catholicism tries to hold a middle position between Catholicism and Orthodoxy. The third Newton Eparch, Bishop John, says in his website that you can attend Antiochian Orthodox religious services and pray with them. Basically telling you to pray with those that are outside the Roman Catholic Church, telling you that you can pray with heretics. This contradictory nature of what Rome has become today shows that the Roman Church proves that Orthodoxy is correct. And so that will be the end of the video. If you liked it, like, subscribe, uh, follow me on Twitter. And thanks for watching. God bless you all.